Welcome back to Big Burst TV and on this episode I'm going to attempt to change the center dip fluid inside my Armour Mojave 4S. Um, I previously changed it out. Uh, it's listed as 500,000 or half a million weight uh, fluid in the center diff and I changed it to 1 million but I'm getting that uh, severe ballooning again in the front tire so I think it's time to change it out. So without further ado let's get right into this and uh what i'm going to do is speed this up so you know you know the process you can feel free to slow it down at any section that you want to see in uh, real time so here we go So that's one center diff out. Notice how there's a little slop in that ring gear, even though I tightened these bolts. I said in a previous video, it does get loose, but I'm guessing that allows for some expansion. So now what we need to do is uh, loosen these four bolts and it should come away. Now, of course, that wouldn't be easy. I have one bolt that's rounded off here. The hex just spins inside. So I'm gonna try to, uh, I'm gonna try to get this out. Uh, I don't know how, but I'm gonna try. So hang on. Yeah, so I tried all the tricks. Uh, I tried the super glue trick, heating it up, a larger hex uh, driver, Allen wrench. Um, a star wrench, even drilling it out and nothing was getting this thing out. And so I ordered a, a Dremel tool or a Dremel like tool with a cutoff disc. Hopefully I can make a slot in here and then uh, get it removed with a flathead screwdriver. But while I'm waiting for Mamazon to deliver that to me, I'd like to take this moment to thank you all. I just hit 450 subscribers. Today is uh, February 5th of 20. 24 i don't know if that's coming through but anyway let's see uh it doesn't want to focus anyway february 5th so i hit about 450 subscribers so thank you to all so i'll be doing a giveaway uh this giveaway is going to be rc related so make sure you're subscribed and looked out for that it's going to be really awesome man it's been more than five minutes since i ordered that thing well let me just go charge the battery maybe that'll kill some time Mama's on is usually good about these things. I mean, they should be here by now. What's going on? Five minutes. It's crazy. Let's get this battery charged. Better be here before this battery gets charged. Well, I know. I'm a prime member. I have my stuff in less than five minutes. It's ridiculous. <sighs> Calm down, Briss. You don't want to blow yourself up putting this battery on the wrong charge. All right, what is this? Success? Still not here. Ridiculous. Finally. Okay. Mamazon just showed up with my package. So let's get right in here. This should be my uh, cutoff tool. My Dremel. <laughs> Let's see, let's close this up before I cut. So, yep, here we go. 
So let's get this open and see if we could get that rounded bolt out. Let's see what we got here. Oh, nice little pouch case. Now, I've never used one of these before, but oh man, I think I'm gonna have to charge it. But I think they have some HSS bits in here. So <laughs> we're gonna check this out and uh, see if we get that bolt cut off. I'll figure out how to do this and uh, be right back. See if it has any power. How would you turn it on? Zero power. Okay. All right. Got to charge. All right. Turns out I was pressing the lock unlock button and not the power button. Here's the power button. And it's got five speeds. So we got the cutoff wheel. And I'm about to get busy with this. Oh. Eye protection. Safety first. I shouldn't be doing this so close to my finger, but you know, I'm a professional. <laughs> Let me do this off camera to, for safety and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a nice slot cut in there. I'm gonna try to get in there with my screwdriver and back it all the way out. All right, I had to go with the power tool, so. And just like that, it came out. So, <laughs> let's get, I'm happy. <laughs> this tool worked incredibly well i think i only paid like 20 bucks for it on amazon so yeah I, I give a thumbs up to this thing uh i don't even know what the brand is hardell four volt cordless cordless rotary tool and i use this cutoff wheel um really handy wow i was actually looking at buying a new one of these it's like 60 bucks all right so let's continue uh two millimeters and we want to back these screws out all right break it open now you want to be careful with this because there's a gasket wow look at that now that's supposed to be one million and look at how gooey it is There's that gasket, the blue part. You wanna save that. Uh, I also keep handy. I don't have a trusty pair of needle nose pliers, but I do have some tweezers. So I'm just gonna get in here with my fingers and remove all of these gears because I'm gonna be cleaning this whole thing out. So you have a gear and a pin and you just wanna get them all out. See, the pin stayed in that gear. See, this stuff is sticky, viscous. And then this whole centerpiece comes out. Now, here's where you want to be really careful because you have some O-rings that you want to keep if they're in good shape. And then these two halves come apart just like that. Okay? And you have... some shims here and an, a shim and an o-ring see that so let's put the o-ring to the side here and I'll show why in a minute and then the shim let's get it down there and then the other side you want to remember how you took this apart you got another o-ring and a shim goes right up against the gear on the shaft Get those apart, put the O-ring to the side. And the shim is metal, so it can go in with uh, these metal parts that we're gonna clean. All right, and then you can just kind of wipe it and make sure there's nothing else there. 
Okay, so now we have some of those parts out. Now what we're going to do, <laughs> you're going to need a lot of shop rags, paper towels for this. My wife is going to murder me if I make a mess here. Okay, so here's another pin. And here's your O-ring. I'm actually not going to clean this part. I'm going to kind of wipe it with a paper towel, but that's fine. I'm just going to leave this just like that. I don't want to take a chance of damaging this uh, this gasket. So we're going to leave this part here. And the main barrel here. You can see some sludge down in there. Now what you can do normally with a thinner weight oil, you could just take the paper towel and then turn this upside down and give it some minutes. I don't know how long, depending on the viscosity, and have it drain out. I'm going to get in there and kind of scoop all of the rest of this out, and then I'll show you the next steps. I'm going to be using this clean strip, min odorless mineral spirits, uh, to clean up these parts. It helps to have a glass mason jar handy. <laughs> you put the parts in there and just let it submerge for a while. I'm going to attempt to use this plastic. Hopefully the clean strip doesn't eat up at it. This is my first time doing this, but... Now you can remove this ring gear if you wanted to. Since uh, this armor diff is completely metal, um, we don't have to worry too much about contaminating uh, plastic or anything like that. Just the O-ring and these two, uh, just the gasket and these two uh, rubber O-rings. So we don't want to get those uh, contaminated with uh, this clean right. So parts that we took out. Just dump them in this bowl like that. Make sure you got all the parts out. See, this stuff is really sticky. And then I'm going to use this for the rinse and repeat process. I could always throw this out. Let's get this odorless stuff open okay now i don't want to spill this on anything but so i'm going to try to do this uh as okay make sure that's closed up and now I have all these parts in here submerged. I'm going to actually scoop the rest of this out and then submerge this in here. So let me go to that. Okay, so we got all of our clean parts. Obviously, this is not championship race level uh, diff cleaning. Otherwise, you probably have a diff station. But uh, this will get you going and get you back in the game uh, as far as the hobbyists and bashing. So... Okay, so we have all of our parts here, nice and clean. So that clean strip did its thing, uh, worked wonders for me cleaning these parts. Uh, it was about 10 bucks for a quart of it at the old Home Depot. Um, just wanna give these parts a quick once over with your, your shop rag or your paper towel and make sure that stuff uh, is fully off of here because it will break down your fluid if you when you refill this so you want to make sure these parts are dry and once that's done you could get down in there some guys get down in there with a q-tip i happen to not have any q-tips on hand you could also do this trick just take the paper towel and then go in there with a with a driver and kind of get in those corners like that but you don't want to leave any bits of paper towel in there. But you see how much that got out of there? So let's try that one more time. Just not too hard, too much pressure. Get down in there. Get as much as that gunk you can out. Okay, so once that's done, what you want to do now is reassemble this. Now, down in here, and these little slots for the pins, you see there's some fluid still in there. That's fluid mixed with the clean right. That's what the, where the 
Q-tip will come in handy. If you get differential fluid down in here, it's going to be tough to put those pins back in and seat them fully. Um, I've, tr I've gotten ran into that where you got to kind of force it. It makes, I forgot the word, uh, but I don't know. Some It makes up a hydraulic pressure or something in there. And um, it doesn't want the pin, let, want to let the pin seat fully. And it'll be hard to get this thing closed and back together. And you sometimes have to force it. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to install those pins before we fill it up with fluid. And this way we can get them nicely seated and uh, continue with the rebuild of our diff. Okay, see how that pin, you push it down and then once it pop back up, that's that pressure. But now we just relieved it. This is how I do it. Uh, the outdrive side faces outward or toward the uh, center of the vehicle this way. And so this part goes onto your drive shaft. And so that's how you know which side this goes into. Maybe easier, just like it came out, to put the O-ring on the shaft after the shim first. <laughs> then slide it in there. And get it seated. And then reinstall this, at least the planetary gears. Okay, all that's in there good and wants to spin but it's not going to spin properly because these are not seated okay and then we can do the top side all right and now to the refilling prop parts now i turned this upside down to see if it would move and it did it actually moved it was down in there. I don't know if you recall in the last video when I showed it down in there, but it actually moved. Okay. So this 1 million. Okay. So when I refilled it last time, I used the back of a spoon, but my wife, we went out and got these bougie uh, silverware that I can't use the back of this. So I'm just going to use a butter knife and I'm just going to take some, see how thick that is. Look at that. And this is room temperature. It's about, I think maybe 68, 70 degrees in here. And then we're just going to get some in there. Like that. It's oddly satisfying. <laughs> and then, uh, here's where you want to take your drive shaft. Where does it put it? Drive shaft. Here you are. Take your drive shaft. And then... You can install it like that and then slowly try to turn these. That goo is in there gooey. You don't want to get any on your fingers. You'll be stuck to everything. But I'm going to try to... Okay, this doesn't want to turn. So we're just going to reinstall the top side. We can, but it's going to want to grab the gears, so put your drive shaft and then kind of try to spin it a little bit, work it and work it, wiggle it and it'll go in. There you go. And now you just turn, give it a turn. You can hear those gears in there working. You can see this side spinning. 
and try to hold it here and turn it. That will turn opposing. All right. And then after we do that, we're going to open it back up. Now, at this stage, this is when it gets tricky because look how dark that got already. And we want to fill this with more diff fluid. So remember what I said about this stuff, these pins going in, it's going to be tough this time. So we're going to take them. <laughs> you use your drive shaft as a lollipop holder stick. All right. Now we're going to take those. those shafts and try to install them again in the planetary gears where they go. That's one. These two you could actually leave on top, but This one goes there, this one goes here, okay, it's in there, okay, so this one goes down in this hole, and that'll help us align this, okay, now I'm going to just get a little bit more differential fluid in there, so. wondering if I should try to put earplugs in here. Let's get it down in there. All right, that should be enough. Get it closed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now look at that diff fluid oozing out as this gets tighter. That's how we know we got it full. And there you have it. One million in the Armour Mojave Forest Center Diff. This also works for the Creighton and the Outcast uh, Center Diffs that have this Center Diff in it. Um, that 1 million will help with the front tire ballooning. And um, now we just put it back in and take this thing for a rip and, and see how it does. Yes. Not nearly as much ballooning. <laughs> yes, I can see an immediate difference in the front tire ballooning. Oh, you didn't think I was going to use my new body for that. <laughs> anyway, it went from this. Oh, all day. Oh, look at those front wheels, though. Wow, they, they do. Wow, they balloon. Crazy. To this. All right, <laughs> let's go. I can see an immediate difference. So there's how you do it. How to change the center diff fluid in an Arma Mojave 4S. This will also work for the center diffs in the Creighton and the Outcast 4S that had the all metal center diff. I'm out of breath, I just ran upstairs. <laughs> it's too exciting. Anyway, 
stay tuned for a future video that's going to feature these three parts and um for that giveaway you won't want to miss this so make sure you subscribe oh and i'll also put a link to this uh <laughs> four volt cordless uh, mini Dremel kit uh this thing was really cool i think i paid about 20 bucks on it from ebay it's got uh from amazon it's got five different speeds and it did wonders for cutting off that making the slot in that uh stripped hex bolt so hit that thumbs up if you liked the video or if it helped you out that's why i make these videos hopefully it'll help somebody out make it easier for you so make sure you subscribe and this has been big Briss. everybody stay well and i'll catch you on the next one